This looks good. I mean, it's a little greener for my liking, but I don't mind it. It's not too bad. Eye tracking seems to work well. Hey, so uh, welcome, welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, I mean, that's just where everything gets done. Kitchens where everything happens, I, I think. In my opinion, uh, my humble opinion, that's where it gets happening. But uh, this doesn't look too bad, does it? Like, all things considered, like I've got, I mean, I'm still shooting manual. My, I'm still shooting manual, so I've dialed in the settings to how I'd like, but I might take it out and I just switch everything to auto because that's how, that's how you would use this camera, isn't it? Oh, by the way, uh, this isn't, this isn't my typical setup. As you guys know, Canon, Canon lover. I am a Canon lover forever. I love Canon cameras, but uh, this video, I mean, this part here, there will be a cutaway shot that's, you know, on the Canon, but this section right here, this isn't shot on the Canon. This is shot on the Nikon Z30. Hey, so uh, this is the Nikon Z30. And there, there's my Canon that's usually filming everything. Just the R6, the beast, the main driver, everything that goes on. But you know, Nikon, um, Nikon made the Z30, which is meant to be like the content creator's camera. And if I'm being honest, I didn't like the idea, the concept, the the sound of that. It just wasn't, I just wasn't in, I, I, I don't think I wanted to, like that idea, the, the content creator's camera, like I just didn't like the idea of it. So I asked to borrow one. So first up, video not sponsored, not affiliated with anyone, not even, not Nikon, not any, other brand that may have supplied me with this camera. This video is my own. Yes, Nikon AU supplied me with the camera. I don't even think they know, if I'm being honest. I, I, know, I know I know a guy who knows a guy, and he works at Nikon, so he, I was like, can I borrow the Z30 to make a video and just get to play with and see how it works as a content creator's camera, because you know me, I make vlogs and I do the whole YouTube thing, so I thought maybe this is a really good way to test out the 4K quality for one, the autofocus tracking, the different features of the Z30, see how it works in this smaller package, because I don't know if you can tell, this is a very small package camera compared to my R6. Like this here, this camera's just, it's massive. I mean, not this one here, this camera here. Look how big the R6 is, like for me, one sec. Look at this, this is a big setup, I and mean, sometimes I even have the battery grip on it. But this is a massive setup with the Rode NTG, the 16 to 35 mm lens, R6 with a 5K Gorilla tripod. It's a big setup. And carrying this around, it gets heavy, and you look like, oh, well, that guy's, that guy's serious about what he does. I mean, yeah, I am serious about what I do, uh, vlog-wise. I just noticed that the white balance on the Canon seems to be just a little bit better than the Nikon. Like, you're looking a little green over here. <laughs> but... You know, you use like set up this big. It's like, oh, phew, that's uh, that's serious. Someone's uh, what are, you, what are you making a commercial about your life? A documentary? No. Yes. Yes, I am. But when you can move basically this, I mean, that's this is this is a much smaller package. It's phenomenal. Like I've got the 3K kit. I don't even have a microphone on it because the built-in microphones are meant to be solid. I just didn't feel like. Using mic. I'll put a mic on because I'm meant to have wind socks uh, that go on the microphones for when I'm outside but uh, they didn't supply me with that so I've just got the camera as it is. So yeah, today we're going to just be filming mostly on the Z30, see how it holds up, uh, see what it's like vlog style and then see what it's like, you know, with my lights, all my setup, like everything just immaculate with the Rode NTG, with the nice lights I've got set up. We'll just see how that looks on the Z30 and see if you can like get away. Like how does it hold up as a content creator? Like that's it. I just want to test how well does this hold up to the claims of being a content creator camera. Okay, so I've got to go get a haircut because my hair is just a mess right now. And I feel like we're just doing chores whenever we do vlogs, but it's more than that. So we're doing more than that. We're testing a new camera today. We're testing our camera. So it's a bit more interesting. And you're not just watching me do my chores. I'm actually making content because I'm a content creator. Okay, so welcome back to yet another video today. We're not talking about Canon cameras, and as you know me, I love me some Canon cameras. It is, is that my go-to? I, I started on here. This is the camera I started on, and I keep it on my desk just as a reminder for where I started. This is, uh, this is the Canon M50. It's kind of what started me doing uh, YouTube and filmmaking and all that sort of stuff. This helped pay for my first couple of gigs. This 
was just a chem one I got started with and it, it holds a special place in my heart and that's why I keep it on my desk as a reminder to keep persevering. But uh, that's not what we're talking about today. Today, hold on, I put it on charge because I want to use it in a second for filming this and see how it looks compared to like, I mean, a $6,000 camera with like a thousand dollar lens. But so that's the point, I want to see how the Z30 holds up in like a YouTube setup sort of thing where you've got a controlled lighting and you've got your microphone mic'd up to you. Just want to see how it goes, but I put on charge, so I'll go get that one. Thank goodness this charges through USB-C because they didn't give me a charger. Nikon did not provide me with a charger for this thing. So it's kind of just like, if it dies, good luck. So this is the Nikon Z30. As you can see, Nikon AU did lend it to me, but this is the Z30. It is what Nikon is calling like a content creator camera. Well, I don't know if that's what they're calling it, but yeah, I feel like the necklace is gonna be just interfering with the mic a lot. So we're gonna take it off. But now my neck looks bare. I'm sorry if that, that whole first section of the audio is just trash because V-Pop was wearing a necklace. Okay, so yeah, Z30 it is what Nikon is aiming at, at, like a content creator style camera, that people who don't need a full frame mirrorless camera, you just want to be able to take photos, take videos for social media, be able to hold it out light. It's a light camera, so you can hold it out in front of you even without a Gorilla tripod. It's a great camera. It's got your flip out LCD, the kit lens it comes with, the 16 to 50. Great, small, compact, it's amazing. I do like the size of the camera. I like a lot about the camera, if I'm being completely honest. There's a lot of things I don't like, and that's like Canon bias aside. There's a lot of things I think this camera, it's just, it's got a weird, a few weird quirks, and I wanna just, I wanna talk about them. I've only been using this camera today. Most of this video was shot on this camera. It was shot in 4K at 25 frames a second. What's great is that Nikon still gives you like, their phase detect autofocus system when using shooting at 4K 25. Uh, back in 2018, 2019, 2020, early 2020, when I was using the M50, if I wanted to shoot 4K on this thing, it was either 4K 25 and it didn't have Canon's dual pixel phase detection autofocus, which just kind of made it made it a bummer because the autofocus would drift, it would hunt in and out and you just wouldn't want to use 4K using the M50. Now in 2022, a lot of cameras do just have phase detection autofocus, which is the superior method, in my opinion, for tracking faces, because if I come real close to this camera, it keeps me in focus. If I come real far back, it immediately tracks back and keeps me in focus with eye detection. This camera will do that. It's That's amazing, 4K, I mean, it's great, but I've said before, 4K is not the end of the world. If you cannot, if your camera doesn't shoot 4K, it's not the end of the world. This camera does 1080p at 100 frames a second. So if you wanna do that slow motion, Peter McKinnon like B-roll, you can do that using the Z30. This camera is actually quite stacked full of features, like video record features, and comparative to its price, which is around, what is it, 1600? I think it's like six, I might be lying, but I'm pretty sure the Nikon Z30 is like 1600. Oh, wow, that's a lot cheaper. I think it's the Z50 that retails. All right, 1299. Right now there's a few sales going on, so it's a little bit misleading, but that's a really good price for a mirrorless camera with, with this set of features. It's amazing. You got 4K 25, you've got 100 frames a second slow motion. Amazing. You've got the new face detect autofocus. That's, you know, almost standard in a lot of mirrorless cameras. So if you wanted to just set and forget, just shoot, create more than art, you can do that with this camera and it's phenomenal that it's now, this technology is so accessible to so many people. Uh, you've got your flip out LCD so when you're vlogging you can see yourself which I think is an absolute must. Uh, you don't have a viewfinder though so for photographers this may not be the camera you want to jam with if you're taking snaps. You're no viewfinder, no eyepiece, it's nothing. It's just back of the LCD screen and that's it. I'm just using the 16 to 50 mil lens because that's the lens that it comes with. It's just the lens that you're probably going to use if you're picking up this camera. Yes, you can get the nice Z glass, but you're paying for it. Uh, something I am a little disappointed at, not just with Nikon, but Sony and Canon, that they don't have like an APS-C cropped lens that's the equivalent of a 16 to 35. 
because this being a crop factor uh, sensor, you're looking at more of a 24 to 70, 24 to 80 mil lens, which is great if you want to, you know, have that versatility in the zoom range. But for vlogs, I don't think it's as good because 24, I just feel like, I feel like I'm a floating head just talking to you guys. Uh, well, I feel like I have to stretch that arm out with the Gorillapod super far to get like good good framing like really good framing where you can see things around me if i had people in the back seat or if i had someone in the car with me i would we pretty tight together and i i wish there was like a 16 or 35 like a 10 to 20 mil lens that i could chuck on that doesn't cost an arm and a leg it's not the end of the world like if again you're doing it for the content creation and the only thing you had before was your phone you're not going to really miss a viewfinder now again i like a viewfinder it does give you that third point of contact when taking photos and even videos now with mirrorless cameras and it just helps if you're super sunny, you're outside, you can't really see the back of the LCD screen, but you can, you know, you can put your eye up to the viewfinder and then just bam, everything's crystal clear within that viewfinder. So that's kind of a bummer for me, but it's not the end of the world. Another great thing about this camera is the ergonomics. Um, this is something I don't think people always think about when buying a camera. They just go, oh, look at the specs, the, the, the specs, what am I buying? in terms of specifications. And yes, you're getting some pretty decent specs in this, but the ergonomics on this camera, phenomenal. The R50, yeah, the R50 and the M50, their grips, like, they're non-existent though. Check this out. Look at the grip on the R on the M50. Like that's, I don't know if you can see that because all the shadows, but that's non-existent. Like if I put my hand around that, like that's, that's it. I, I'm just, it's all cramped, I don't like it. On the M50 and the R50, you've only got the one dial. So if you're doing manual photography, manual filmmaking, anything requiring manual control of the camera, you have to go and set your shutter speed and then you hit a button on the back and you go aperture and then you hit another button and you go ISO. I love that this camera comes with two dials. Shutter speed, aperture, and you hit the button you go over your ISO. I think that's how most cameras should have it. There are some cameras that have the three dials, like the R6, the R5. They've got the shutter speed, aperture, and a dial on the back, and that's just how I prefer to have it. I think minimum, cameras should come with two, especially if you're gonna be venturing into manual photography, manual filmmaking. I like that the fact it has a photo video switch, like, check that out. So you've got this switch over here for photo and video. You wanna switch to photos, you just switch it to photos. You wanna switch it to video, you switch it to video. That's something my R6 doesn't have, and it annoys me. Heck, my R doesn't have it. Like, almost none of my cameras just have a photo video switch, and it's a very small thing, like, you don't really think about it, but when you have it and it's accessible and you're like, bam, photo, bam, video, it's, it's a good time, we're having a good time. So, those are a lot of the things that I do like about the camera. Something I don't like about the camera is, for some reason, I don't know, I don't know if it's just this camera or the audio levels, if you want to monitor audio levels like via the LCD screen and not have to put on headphones every single time. Does it even have, it doesn't have a, actually, doesn't even have a, have a headphone port. So I couldn't even plug in if I wanted to monitor audio. So you see at the bottom right here where the uh, waveforms are, so you can monitor audio. That's amazing that it's here, but once I flip the screen out, see now that I flip the screen out, the audio levels are gone and that's super frustrating because if I'm, you know, I'm filming someone else or filming anything out, the audio levels are there. But once I flip the screen out for some reason, they disappear and I'm like, well, now I can't see if I'm monitoring my audio level properly, just eyeballing it at the very least. Another thing that I find super weird is once you turn it around again, flip the screen around, I can't change any of my settings when the screen's flipped out. And I find that's like a big miss. Like I'm try trying to change all the settings. That but that's just really frustrating that like if you're in the middle of vlogging something and you want to switch over to 1080 or you want to switch to a higher frame rate, you can't change the settings because it just, it doesn't let you. But aside from that, it seems to be a really good camera. If this was my first camera and I wanted to vlog with it, I wanted to create YouTube videos, I'm sure I could get by just fine. So I'm gonna snap my fingers and we're gonna be over to the Z30. Now, of course, we're gonna be looking at a very different camera, very different quality video when using the Z30 compared to the R6. So I am shooting this in log with the 10-bit color. Uh, the Z30, I don't believe does that in any capacity. There is no log capabilities, which makes sense for a camera of this price. But I wanna show that you can still, you know, swap out my, swap out a big setup. If you do get some nice lights, yes, and you know, mic yourself up properly, you can make quality videos as well. So I'm gonna snap my fingers and we'll be on the Z30. 
Okay, this is the Z30 and how it looks uh, in the studio environment I've got set up. Uh, it is not log, so the dynamic range probably isn't as good as the R6, but of course we're looking at a very different price point camera. Uh, I've set this up to be about the same-ish focal length. Now, of course, because we're looking at a DX crop, a APS-C crop, it is cropping in on the kit lens that we have now. Uh, I did get supplied the 20 millimeter, what is it? Yeah. 20 millimeter f1.8 s badge lens so i'm going to put this on here so you can see what would happen if you were just to buy like you know the most entry level the most basic level z30 body but if you were to say acquire some nice glass and you know set up some lights have a good time this is what that's going to look like so okay so we're back on 20 millimeter lens this is quite wide actually does this seem wider i think it's wider than 20 it's like almost like 30 mil on a crop sensor but whatever. All right, so now we're on the 20 mil f1.8. That's gonna give us a bit more depth of field when we're recording in our studio setup or even if you're shooting B-roll, if you're shooting yourself vlogging handheld. I wouldn't vlog with this lens personally. It's just not wide enough, but that's just one of my small little nitpicks I have about the camera. Another great thing I love about the camera is the tally light. I don't know if you can see, I don't know if you know about this, but the Nikon has a tally light. The Z30 has a tally light for when you are recording. So if you're unsure, you're not recording, because I've done it, I've been there, I've hit record, or I thought I hit record. You start recording the video and then you realize five minutes in, you're like, I'm not recording. That's a shame. I like that feature. It's nice. I believe you can turn it off if it does get distracting, that little red light just back there, just, it's a little light bulb that blinks. But yeah, this is what the Z30 is. It's, I think it's a great camera for those starting out who wanna do YouTube, who wanna get into filmmaking. You've got a lot to play with at this $12.99 price point. I, again, I recommend, as always, you should be buying nice lenses to pair with your Z30. And then in the future, if you wanna upgrade to like the Z62 or the Z72 or even you know an actual camera with the Canon system, you can do that. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I hope that my perspective on the Z30 was insightful because as a Canon shooter, you know, when I say something good about the Nikon, you know it's gonna be really good because I don't normally shoot Nikon, I don't like Nikon, it's, I just don't like it. One, I'm sorry. I just, it's not my, it's not my cup of tea. I'm a Canon guy. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Leave your thoughts below. Um, I did try to use this camera in a variety of situations from vlogging around the house, vlogging outside. I feel like you wouldn't be disappointed if you were to buy this camera. Um, again, not sponsored, but uh, Nikon, if you want to sponsor me, I'm not saying it will be easy to get me to switch my Canons, but I'm open to suggestions. All right, have a good day, guys. Have a good morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one.